as we go behind the scenes of this year's most anxiously awaited sequel. Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg reassembled the cast they put together four years ago to create Back to the Future Part 2. Mark, action. Back to the Future Part 2 begins where Back to the Future 1 left off. You've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the Future. Back. Information about the future can be very powerful. And um, if it's, it falls into the wrong hands, it can affect the world, which it does in this movie. They've slipped up and they've caused events to be altered very negatively. And they have to go back and repair the damage. Marty will be hurled back to 1955, and the filmmakers had to meticulously recreate sets and scenes from the first film. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Marty has to go back and actually do some stuff behind himself playing Johnny B. Good. Not me, the other me, the one that's up on stage playing Johnny B. Good. I was so jazzed just to be doing that. But I mean, it was deja vu. I had been there before. You know, I had been done exactly the same thing. As difficult as it was to recreate the 50s, the greatest challenge was a futuristic version of Marty's hometown in the year 2015. The future. To make this vision of the future a reality, Zemeckis called upon the talents of production designer Rick Carter. We, in a sense, had to get everybody to get past the images that came from Blade Runner. You know, smoke and the chrome and everything. And I just felt that it was important that we be as detailed as they were, but that we convey a different tone. Carter and his team of futurists would spend months plotting, planning, and preparing to turn Hill Valley into a city of the future. I wanted to take what you knew about Hill Valley from the first movie and just go further and push those same ideas further because that's what becomes fun. Right, here we go. After two years in the making, the future had arrived, and Marty was about to come face to face with the year 2015. Hill Valley isn't the only thing that's changed in the future. Using state-of-the-art makeup techniques, the actors were transformed into futurized versions of themselves. The process itself is pretty, um, uh, pretty time-consuming. It's, uh, you know, it was about four hours all told. Could be worse, could have a job. Mm, beautiful, huh? I look like a really old Mr. Clean like this, don't I? An old, bitter Mr. Clean. Look, I'm sick. I'm sick of cleaning up floors. That's not the most pleasant thing in the world, but I think that's all worth the fun that you have um, when you're actually in character. No comment, damn it! No comment! The characters created through these advanced makeup techniques were a closely guarded secret during the shooting of the film. For the filmmakers, an even bigger secret was the creation of a futuristic device that demanded very special attention. I need to blur your hoverboard. The hoverboard is a board that hovers on magnetic energy, and it works just like a skateboard, except it doesn't have any wheels, and you don't have to have any pavement to hover on. And they've been around for years, it's just that parents groups have not let the toy manufacturers make them and we got our hands on some and we put them in the movie I think this is going to really blow people away it's it's just everything it's it's everything you go everything you go to movies for